Yeah, With, but there's a lot in it. There's a lot in this um, this book. And if you if you look at it, one of my favorite chapters is Isaiah 53, and it talks plainly about what Jesus Christ did for us. And uh, and uh, it's a it's prophetic. It's a it's a it's a and it's quoted all the time in the New Testament. You'll see it, Isaiah say. You know, in the New Testament, you'll see Romans where Paul says, as the book, of, he always refers to the book of Isaiah, the eunuch. He was reading the, the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 53, and he got saved with Philip. So Isaiah is a prophetic book, and if you deal with the Jews a lot, Isaiah is a good place to go, but they always uh, typifies it to the nation of Israel, and they won't take it personal. But, um, very good book. Very good book. Uh, Isaiah means Je Jehovah. Let's pray before we start. Lord, pray that you'll bless this study in Isaiah. Pray that you'll watch over it and uh, help me to be able to say what you need me to say and show me the things and help us to see light from your word and help it to help us help it to help us, God. We need it. And uh, Lord, we need anything from your word. And I pray that you bless this study now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now Isaiah means Jehovah is my helper. And uh, if your name is Isaiah and you didn't know what your name means, that's what it means. Y'all ever do that? No. You find somebody's name and you figure out what it means and you say, you know what that name means? If he's got, got a Bible name, it means something. Yes, so when you ever find somebody that has a Bible name, look it up and say, you know what your name means? It's a good way to witness to them. And, uh, but Isaiah, and I know some people named Isaiah. Isaiah means Jehovah is my helper. Or save thou Jehovah. The first of the major prophets is Isaiah. Is called the, and Isaiah is called the prince of the prophets. Uh, or the event evangelical prophet. Because he says so much about the redemption work of Messiah uh, more about the person of the work of Christ is found here than in any other book in the Old Testament. Now, our Psalms got a lot. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot that points to Jesus Christ. But you read all through Isaiah and it points to Jesus Christ. Now, the main, the main subject on it is, I would have to say, it's the second advent. I mean, the advent. Jesus Christ coming. And uh, it, there's all through the book of Isaiah, you got the second advent. And we'll go over that, and you'll see it over and over. And uh, the Lord repeats it. So what He's wanting you to do in the book of Isaiah, I think He wants you to keep your eyes fixed on the future and what's coming up. And uh, be ready for it. Um, so He's all, all the time reminding you of that. Here's some... Um, you got, you got some verses that stand out in the book of Isaiah, like 118. There's some verses that's just people's, your favorite. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. How many has ever heard preaching on that? I have bunches of messages. Very good verse. I remember having to memorize that when I was a kid. Uh, look at Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter, well, go over there at 2 4. Here's another one. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords in the plowing shares, their spears in the print. Y'all know where that is? It's on the United Nations wall. And uh, they wrote that down. And uh, I was listening to Dr. Ruckman's commentary, and he said that the ESV had a verse like that long, you know. They beat their tractors down and their plows. He says, what a bunch of nonsense. <laughs> you imagine put a new version on the side of that wall. They got the King James up there. Yes, and uh, they ain't paying no attention to it, but they got it up there. And uh, it's, it's amazing. The Lord will get up there and they say, didn't you have it right on your wall and you didn't listen to me? Amen. <laughs> uh, peace is the Lord Jesus Christ coming. United Nations doesn't have nothing to do with Jesus Christ. All right, look at uh, chapter 9. Chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9, look at verse 6. Here's, here's another 
For unto us a child is born. You've ever heard that before? <laughs> That's in Luke. Uh, us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. How many ever listen to Handel's Messiah? And he shall reign for... You know, there it is. Uh, that's the song right there. I mean, there is verses that we sing about. And you listen to Handel's Messiah, you'll see a lot of Isaiah in it. Anybody, anybody listens to Handel's Messiah? You ought to listen to it. And I'll tell you what, that's a soothing, uh, poetic song that's just great. I have to tell this story because every time I think about Handel's Messiah, I think about my dad. He, he was younger, you know, grew up in the 60s and the 70s there, and he got saved over there in, um, in Detroit, Michigan. But anyway, his pastor was in the car, Jimmy Allen, and he says, what's in your tape? And pushed it in, and it's some, you know, 70s music. He goes, that's trash. He says, you need to listen to some good stuff, and gave him Handel's Messiah. He said he took that thing home, and he says, I started listening to that, and it tickled me. He says, I heard that, oh, 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 oh. He says, I got on my back and I was laughing at it. <laughs> he said, the more I started listening to it, the better I liked it. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then now when, when he would raise us, he didn't allow us to listen. But we listened to Handel's Messiah. <laughs> but he, he laughed about that. He thought it was funny. All right, you look at um, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Isaiah 40, 31. Uh, you'll see this on a lot of Bible covers. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So Isaiah's got a lot, a lot in there that you hear all the time. And this book was written in 760 to 698, 740, 680 B.C. It's 600, almost 700 years before Christ. And uh, the dates on the book is, I just, right there, 670 to 698. That's what Dr. Ruckman says. Um, Ryrie says seven, they were about like 10 years difference. Somewhere around in that range. In the time of Uzziah, here's the kings that reigned when... Isaiah lived. Uzziah, he was a good king. Jotham, his son. Ahaz, bad king. And Hezekiah. Now I want you to notice, Isaiah written this. There were some good kings and there were some bad kings. And we're living right now, we got good rulers and bad rulers. Right now, he's a bad ruler. <laughs> you say... Yeah, I don't, I don't think he's doing a good job. What do you do? You pray for him. Amen. Lord, pull a trick on him. Get him saved. And uh, he's out of his mind, but help him to get up there and say, Hey, I got saved. Yes. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if the president would do that? Yes, sir. Man, I'd love it. <laughs> oh, they'd have a fit. <laughs> yeah, they'd say he's insane. <laughs> yeah, they'd say he's insane and put him in the nut house. <laughs> Yes, sir. That's what would happen. It would, and that's what we want. We want them saved. Get saved, then we say, keep them in there. <laughs> I mean, we're for them. We're for the man getting saved. We're not for his demise. I'm not for it. I, I'd rather him see him just get saved and go for Christ. That's what Paul did. That's what Paul did. And, uh, and yes, if he ain't going to get right, get him out of the way. And I pray, I pray that this nation will go in a way, I mean, we've got to stay faithful, stay in that book, and if God has mercy on us, He comes before it gets too bad. That's, her, you know, that's what I'm praying for. But I see the book of Isaiah, and Brother Valance mentioned this, he said, Isaiah depresses me. Brother, it's Jeremiah. Jeremiah? <laughs> <laughs> but you look at the first 14 verses, yeah, he's going down the road right here. <laughs> and uh, he's, he's hitting that. And uh, you see your nation, and you picture it, 
and you'll see what's going on and it does depress you because we're in that time. You don't know what will happen in five years. You don't know what a year will bring forth. You don't know what a day will bring forth. I mean, we could be getting bombed. You never know. And that's what Isaiah is going through through these kings. And he's got good rulers and some bad and some of the good mess up. And uh, we'll go over some of that. Um, Jewish tradition says Isaiah was sawed in two inside a mulberry tree when uh, Manasseh was king. Now Manasseh is the one that took, took over is Hezekiah's son. And he took over and uh, they said he, they sawed him in two and uh, they say that he's probably in his 80s when they did that. Now, put yourself in that spot. I mean, that's pretty wicked, right? Yep. Or we were just mentioning in prayer, Haiti. Yep. And I think I heard it right, but the minister over there was cannibalism. Is that what I heard you say? Uh, it's, <laughs> it's pretty bad. Yep. You say, can that happen? Yeah, that can happen anywhere. That's in human beings. That's in your flesh. And you get wicked and leave God out of your life. That's how wicked you can get. That's, you say, oh, I'll ne don't get away from God then. Stay in that book. You better um, check yourself because uh, you can get pretty wicked if you get away from that book. And when the Lord, when the rapture hits, I can see where it can. I mean, when the Christians leave... And it's going to be wicked. And tribulation comes in. And it's going to be a wicked time. Alright, in times of Uzziah, Jotham, he got tradition. They sawed him in half. And then there was a, that tradition come out of, um, that's a Jewish tradition. Uh, that come out of the Talmud. And it says, Yev-49 B.C. That's in Dr. Ruckman's note. And then there's a later account that says he was in a cedar tree, mulberry tree, cedar tree, but that's what they say, that's how he died, being sawed in two. Now look at Hebrews chapter 11, 37. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 37. Yep. And they were, st uh, start with verse um, 34. Quenched the violence of fire, escaped... Um, Verse 33, Hebrews 11, 33. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Talking about the, the saints, the Old Testament saints going through them and what they did. Quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of the weakness were made strong, waxed violent in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Others have had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonments. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, cut in two. Okay, they, tradition says that was Isaiah right there. Were tempted, were slain with a sword, they wandered about in sheepskins, goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. Amen. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. And having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Now that was before New Testament salvation. Now, in the church age, have you seen that? Yeah, you've seen persecution like that, and it's still going on. You go over to Kuwait, and then Muslim countries, they're cutting their heads off because they love Jesus Christ. They haven't killed nobody. They just told them about Jesus Christ, and they said Jesus Christ is the way, and Muhammad's not. Off with the head. They won't listen to it. And... Uh, they're in this country and they believe the same thing and that could go on right here on this soil. Matter of fact, it probably has. Um, same time, I mean, same persecution goes on right now as it did back then. And uh, we've, we've really had a good break though. I, 
I mean, I'm, I'm 47, 46, and I've never seen nothing like that Amen. here on this earth. I don't want to see that. I want to try to preach Jesus Christ and say, even so come Lord Jesus and let me miss all that. <laughs> and look up to them folks that's done that. Amen. Amen. And respect them and say, thank God for people like that. And God give me the guts if it ever came my way. Uh, but they went through that. That's what Isaiah was going through. Now the book has 66 chapters. 1,292 verses. 37,044 words. You say, now why did you tell me that? Did you count them? No, I didn't count them. <laughs> I didn't count them. But you know what the Bible says? Every word of God is perfect. Every word of God is pure. Every jot and every tittle. I didn't give you the commas. I didn't count them. <laughs> but it's, it's perfect. And uh, you've got people out there that will change one little word. Or they'll delete some, and it's not the same amount of words. And uh, what I'm telling you, there's 66 chapters that is inspired by God, and it's God's Word. Amen. There's 1,292 verses that's inspired by God. Yep. And there's 37,044 words that's inspired by God. And however many commas, it, it's God's Word. And you don't change it. Now there's Bible correctors that will. They'll change this book. They'll take things out. We're to hold this book as God's Word and not change it. Now who... I'm not going to get off on this, but who gives you the right to change it anyway? We're just men. And God's the author. And God established it. He put it out there, exalted it above His name. And we have no right to even touch anything in this book. We've got a right to read it and submit to the Word of God and say, and love it and, and study it. And, uh, and say, this is the closest thing I have to get me to the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? Um, a Bible, I think Hoffman says, a Bible and a Bible is 66 chapters. Each chapter represents a book of the Bible. Now there's a book written on that. I don't have it, but uh, there's where it takes a chapter. Chapter 1 will correlate with Genesis. And you go through that whole thing right there and, and, there, and, it, and it matches. And he's got a couple examples. And we'll go over at Isaiah 1-2. You'll look at that where 1-2 will match Genesis. It says, O earth, earth, hear the word of the Lord. Um, o Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. And what happens in Genesis? <laughs> you get Eve, and Adam and Eve, and they go right against the Lord. And uh, it matches right there. You look at uh, chapter 6, verse 1. Chapter 6, 1. Um... Year of King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting up on the throne, high lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And, and uh, that was matching, I think, Acts, sixth book of the... No, that was matching Joshua and Jesus Christ, the angel of the Lord, with his sword drawn. Matches right there. Isaiah 43 um, matches Matthew, the 40th book in the, in the Bible, in the canon. Uh, 6622 matches Revelation. You look at Isaiah. And they say that goes through on and on. Now, I don't have them verses, but uh, I'd like to get a hold of that book, and I probably will. But um, 6622, it's, For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. Now, it matches Revelation. So, um, that's what Hoffman has a, a note right there about how the Bible is a Bible in the Bible. And it matches each book, each chapter. Isaiah wrote the entire book. Now there's critics that say there's um, other authors other than Isaiah, but that's, that's a bunch of baloney. Um, Isaiah wrote the book. And uh, they see a break, and the reason they say, say that, they see a break right there at 39 and 40 where it 
changes. Now you know, you got New Testament and Old Testament salvation. And the New Testament comes in and it changes a little bit. And they see the the different style, but that was Isaiah. And uh, did he understand? He didn't understand any of that when he wrote it. <laughs> he just wrote what the Lord told him and what was on his mind. And God was inspiring him. And it was telling the future over there by God. And um, this book's an amazing book. And uh, I have. <laughs> I ain't even got a thread of it. I, I, I feel like you just, you just look at that book and it's so high and we're so low. And uh, if you can ever, if you can just get one truth of it, you've got something. Yeah. And there's millions of truths in the Word of God. All right, Isaiah wrote the entire book. Um, he's mentioned in Matthew three three. It says, "As Isaiah." Well, let's go over there, and it tells you in the New Testament what Isaiah wrote. Matthew three three. All right. For this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now that's, that, that, look at 4.14 in Matthew. 4.14, That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. See how he's mentioned in there? Isaiah is mentioned in the New Testament a bunch. Luke 4.16 yeah, I'm just picking a few here. And um, Luke 4, 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought. And as the custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for it to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. When he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel of the poor. He has set me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's Isaiah. Jesus Christ using the book. And he knew it. <laughs> Amen. He preached. He used it. Alrighty. Yeah, the Lord. And uh, we ought to, and we're still using it. Alrighty. Now look at John chapter 12. John chapter 12. John chapter 12, verse 37. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm... There's Isaiah 53. Okay, that's, that's the introduction to Isaiah. And we'll, we'll get into the first verse, and a couple, first couple of verses... And um, like I said, I'm not going to take seven years to go through this. I'm going to try to go fast. <laughs> All right. Um, verse 1. It says, A vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Atham, Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Now you look at um, Uzziah, and he was a good king, also known as Azariah. Reigned from 791 to 740. 52 years he reigned. They say, where did he get that? Now, um, 2 Kings 15, 1 through 7, he did right. And uh, you'll have something, a verse in there that says, Nevertheless, he didn't take the high places down, verse 4. So there's a good king, but he didn't take the high places down. And Isaiah was preaching. And you know what Isaiah had to do as a prophet? He had to go up there and say, hey. <laughs> Point his finger at them and preach at them. And uh, that's the same thing that we have to do nowadays. We have to do the same thing. Uh, when somebody brings up homosexual or queers or sodomy and all that, we've got to preach against it. Um, and I'll tell you what, 
I've learned to say a lot, the Bible says. And give them straight Bible because if you don't, they're going to try to pin it on you. And, uh, and it's coming. It's coming. You try to give them straight Bible and say the Bible says this. So when they said, well, so-and-so said this, and you just look at them and say, I just quoted you the Bible. Amen. And you asked. Yep. Right. And uh, that'll keep you out of a lot of trouble nowadays. Mm -hmm. But it's coming. Yeah. It's coming. Lord, give us wisdom. All righty. Look at Second Chronicles, um, uh, Second Chronicles 26. I think this is, that whole chapter is about Uzziah. Second Chronicles Chapter 26. I think I had. And this is just giving you a foundation of what, what, what time he's in. Um, then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in the room of his father Amaziah. And he built Eloth and restored it to Judah after the king slept with his father. Sixteen years old was Uzziah when he began to reign. That's like Isaac, Isaac, Isaac Witter yep. being king. Y'all imagine that? <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> He's a young feller. <laughs> but that, you ever think about that? Sounds like a lot of fun. They just... <laughs> I don't know. They did it that way. They can you do? Can, can all right? We look at. We say we're going to put President Trump. He's going to be the next president. And we look at him and say, what's his credential? Hey, well, some people say, well, he's too old. Yeah. Well, he's too hard. Well, what about Isaac Witter? <laughs> if I were president today, what would he? Be? <laughs> you see what you're looking at in the time. It's different than now. I mean, they set him up and it stayed in the family. And uh, it's, it's not, an, it's a monarch. Yes, sir. And uh, they put up a king and they kept it in the family. And yep. that king stayed there till he died. Yep. And they followed him. Now what happens if you get stuck with, we want to have, I mean, we'll say the president right now, we keep him till he dies. Yep. It'd be, that'd be a big difference. So, so the, here's what, that's what they dealt. 16 years old, and he reigned 52 years. So we had to put up with Isaac Witter for 52 years as being the ruler. You better do right. <laughs> Can you imagine, imagine that? The Lord puts it on you at a young age and said, you've got to rule people for 52 years. What a responsibility. And um, if God puts you in, he's got you there. And then you've got to serve the Lord. And if you get away from Him, you, you, you rule your country in the wrong way. All right, what did He do wrong? He didn't take the high places.